Today it's time to find out, can a bag of ice melter really stack up against reefing magnesium lines or pharmaceutical grade material? And then give away some fun stuff at the end. Hi, I'm Ryan, your host of Beerus TV Investigates, a weekly YouTube series which explores popular reefing theories, products, methods, what the manuals are missing with a focus on putting them to the test and then rate that theory based on our scale of reef fantasy to reef certainty. This week we have episode three of a four part series which seeks to continue the conversation that's been going on for the last 15 years. Are the off the shelf or ungraded tech magnesium additives just as good as reefing additives? Just because there's a picture of a fish or coral in the front, does it really mean that it's any better? In addition to that, answer some of those questions on our new BRS Pharma line of chems and do pharmaceutical grade materials really mean that it's any better or at least in a meaningful way where reefers are likely to realize incremental or functional results. Looking at the last two episodes, this is what we've seen so far. There has been a significant difference between the pharmaceutical grade materials and the rest. Pretty minimal difference between the food grade materials and the aquarium grade materials. And the only presumably tech grade material tested so far was unacceptable, largely due to arsenic, copper, and aluminum levels. There has been some solid discussion going on over on Reef to Reef based on those results, largely based on how good is good enough. And I'm going to save that discussion for the end of this series, but I do think that it's very interesting to see the evolution of the eternal debate between the hunt for the best tank chemistry and the most affordable chemistry. This week will be particularly interesting because behind the scenes, magnesium is one of the more challenging elements to obtain in suitable quality and still make sure that it's affordable to the average reefer. Typical mined and evaporated sea sources are pretty dirty, so there's a considerable amount of processing to get it into a state appropriate for our application. So this week we're testing six chemicals again, Beerus Pharma, one of the more popular aquarium options we labeled Aquarium 1, Brightwolt's powdered magnesium, another aquarium bulk option, and then presumably two technical grade options which are readily available and commonly discussed on the forums. Roadrunner Ice Melt, which clearly states the only ingredient is magnesium chloride and clearly states that it's a dead sea product, which has been one that reefers have used in the past. Lastly, Safe Step 8300 Magnesium Chloride Ice Melter. Right now, half of you are thinking, sweet, I can't wait to see how the ice melter works. The other half are thinking, are you insane? Why would you even suggest that ice melter would be okay? Well, some of the thought process out there is magnesium chloride is just magnesium chloride. Does it really matter what the intended use is for? I think that we'll shed some light on that today. Just like the prior weeks, two of the samples are popular retail reefing products, but just labeled Aquarium 1 and Aquarium Bulk 1. This is just what we feel is a balance of respect for the community's desire for knowledge and respect for those that are working hard for the community. Really up to them to share their own data. With one exception, Brightwell who stepped up and specifically asked to not just be part of this, but also willing to share the results regardless of what they say. That type of transparency is something that I'm sure the reefing community respects. This is how we're going to test the materials. I collected the samples from our shelves, ordered a couple that we don't stock here, and went to a big box hardware store for the ice melters. We're going to first take some visual assessments by mixing up 184 grams, which is close to a cup of each in a liter of RODI water, and then assessing total clarity and volume of water and solubles. A visual assessment will only tell you so much, but honestly, if you can see it with the naked eye, it's not a trace element. If it turns muddy brown, rusty red, or has a large amount of insoluble crud at the bottom, I don't really care what the ICP MS testing says. I'm personally not going to use it in my reef tank. There are just too many other affordable and safe options out there to gamble an often multi-thousand dollar investment in my reef tank and commitment to my pets to use something that I can see with the naked eye is dirty. Next, we sent the six samples to NSL Analytical to be tested with ICP, MS, and other methods for 21 parameters. This is 16 individual parameters and a group of heavy metals reported together. This type of testing should provide a solid window into the suitability for a reefing application. Before we dive into this, I'd like to share what I'd expect to see here. I certainly expect to see the pharma perform pretty solid. Based on my personal experience with the large flake magnesium, I don't think the aquarium bulk one will be super impressive. And I'm pretty certain that all of the aquarium options will be significantly better than the ice melter, but we'll see. It's important to note that neither of the ice melters are designed for this purpose, nor do they make any claims to that. Okay, getting to it, the magnesium does come in different forms. The BRS is a sugar-like, free-flowing, crystalline structure. Aquarium 1 and Brightwell are more powder-like. The Roadrunner ice melter has been pelletized into small spheres. And both the Aquarium Bulk 1 and the 8300 ice melter come in large flakes. 
I'll say right now that I'd be astounded if anyone even considered using these 8300 ice melter flakes because they're visually very dirty. And with a three second review with my eyes alone, I can see that these are designed for the purpose of melting ice on the street and not a nutritional supplement for any organism, something that I'm sure that they would tell you themselves. Outside of that one, however, the rest are all visually white and look reasonably clean. After mixing them all up, the Beerus Pharma mixed crystal clear with zero undissolved sediment and functionally easily the fastest to dissolve as well. The Aquarium One product did mix up fairly clear, but you can see there's a pretty sizable amount of undissolved particulates at the bottom. If I had to guess, I'd wager that this is due to a significant calcium impurity and the formulation that includes magnesium sulfate. So what you're seeing here is mostly magnesium sulfate, which will likely dissolve once it's introduced into the tank, but it does mean that you need to shake it before using. This is a good time to point out that four of the options here are just magnesium chloride, whereas Aquarium One and Brightwell are likely a mix of various salts to make a more ionically balanced approach to magnesium addition, which most often includes a mix of both magnesium chloride and magnesium sulfate. Next, looking at the Brightwell sample, it mixed crystal clear with a small amount of sediment at the bottom. However, even though it clearly states that this is a mix of anhydrous magnesium sulfate and anhydrous magnesium chloride, there's almost none of that precipitate. And it's very likely because they're using a magnesium chloride source, which is free of that undesirable calcium impurity. I would note that because they are using anhydrous chemicals, this 148 gram solution actually contains near twice as much magnesium as the others as well. I'll also note that the anhydrous chems get super hot when mixing, so be careful. Both the Aquarium Bulk One and the Roadrunner Ice Melter mix crystal clear with no to minimal sediment at the bottom. However, the 8300 Ice Melter mixed up straight up brown, eventually settled out, but a ton of crud at the bottom. I have no issue throwing this on the ground to melt ice, but I have to say I'd be floored if anyone mixed this up, saw this, and considered dosing it to a tank with pets in it. To sum up the visual observations, I would personally use one of the three options which do mix up crystal clear and have very little sediment. I wouldn't exclude the aquarium one, but I guess there's no reason to select one that needs to be shaken before use if you don't need to. Moving on to the analytical testing, we're going to cover each parameter highlighting the highest and lowest levels. In each case, I'll stop for a quick explanation when appropriate, but the real review will come at the end. I'll put a link to the full report in the video description for anyone that would like to review it. Note there are certified results which largely go as low as one part per million as well as estimates which go into the parts per billion because it later gives a closer window into basically the same results, particularly those that read zero or near. We're going to use those for today's review, but the information is there for anyone that wants to review either. As I go through them, note the colors. Green means they performed the best, red the worst, and yellow meaning they were not the worst but still high enough to garner consideration. Starting with acid insolubles, BRS Pharma, Aquarium One, and Aquarium Bulk One all had zeros, and Brightwell was the highest with 35 parts per million. BRS Pharma and Roadrunner Ice Melt also had zero insolubles, with Brightwell having the highest with 300. Looking at the aluminum, Aquarium One and Brightwell tied for the best or lowest with five parts per million, and Aquarium Bulk One had the highest with 11. Next up, Beerus Pharma had the lowest arsenic, and the 8300 Ice Melter had the highest with two parts per million. Similar to that, BRS had the lowest boron with 0.04 and the 8300 ice melter had 760 parts per million and the highest by a large margin. Brightwell just edged out the BRS Pharma for the lowest calcium with 160 parts per million and the Roadrunner ice melter the highest at 8100 parts per million. Brightwell had the lowest copper at zero and Roadrunner ice melter had the highest at five parts per million. Roadrunner had the lowest iron and Brightwell was the highest at 77 parts per million. Looking at heavy metals, Roadrunner Ice Melter had the highest with 8.2 and Brightwell the lowest at 1.7. All the samples had zero mercury. Moving on to lithium, Brightwell had the best at 0.2 and the 8300 Ice Melter had the highest at 1100 parts per million, which is ridiculously high. And I imagine for this reason alone, no one would use it, even if it did mix clear. Looking at the actual magnesium content, Beerus Pharma was the lowest, but virtually the same as four of the others, with the one exception of Brightwell, which has the most magnesium at 211,000, about 90% more than some of the other options. This has a real significance that I'll get into in a moment. Beerus Pharma had the lowest phosphate level at seven, and both of the ice melters were the highest at 15 parts per million. Beerus Pharma registered near zero at 0.1 lead, and the rest were zero. Beerus Pharma also had the lowest silica at 17 and the highest was 75 with 8300 ice melter. 
Once again, the BRS Pharma had the lowest tin at 0.09, and the Roadrunner Ice Melter had the highest at 0.4 parts per million. Lastly, Aquarium Bulk 1 and the 8300 Ice Melter had the lowest zinc at 4 parts per million, and BRS had the highest at 12. Okay, stepping back and looking at all this at once, it's pretty easy to see that the BRS Pharma and Brightwell have the most green or best performances, and the areas where they didn't perform as well are not overly significant. So I'd call these two the top performers, and it's pretty clear the two bottom performers are the ice melts. Reefers can come to their own conclusions here, but I don't think anyone would want to use the Roadrunner, which has five parts per million copper, highest phosphate, and heavy metals. I'd assume that no one would use the 8300 ice melter just just by looking at how dirty the dry material is, how dirty the liquid that it produces is. That said, I don't think this tells the whole story because Brightwell and Hydrous Magnesium has nearly twice the magnesium content, meaning you can use a lot less to realize the same results. Using less also means adding fewer contaminants, so I think that we should take a second look at this and adjust the others up to better represent the amount of impurities that will be dosed to the tank based on the amount they would actually have to dose to achieve the same magnesium results as the Brightwell additive. At the same time, remove the two non-viable options from the mix. Now looking at it from a perspective that adjusts the others up for the additional concentration of magnesium in Brightwell, it's actually the best on all but five of the categories tested. I think the other aquarium retail product, Aquarium One, is clearly the lowest performing with the most red and a pretty significant amount of lithium content. As soon as I saw the high amount of calcium impurity, I was pretty sure that this one would not come out to be the winner due to the presumably lower processing and less pure source material. As to who comes in second, I think there's some debate to be had, but the BRS Pharma was the best in more categories and tied Aquarium Bulk 1 for the same amount of highest. The fact that BRS Pharma is a clearly graded material source, more refined material that mixes easier and functionally doesn't have the high calcium content which causes precipitation issues with magnesium sulfate, makes it a fairly clear second place. However, that's without considering price yet. Looking at the price per pound, Beerus Pharma is $3.28 a pound, Aquarium One is $10.45 a pound, Brightwell is $11.35 a pound, and the other aquarium bulk option is $3.33. Remember, you can use almost half as much Brightwell by weight for the same results, so the equivalent cost is really much closer to like $6.50 a pound. Most reefers don't use a ton of magnesium a month, so I bet the difference is like $0.25 to $0.50 cents a month for most reefers between the most economical and what tested the best in analytical testing. So let's answer today's question, are the off-the-shelf ungraded or tech-graded magnesium additives just as good as reefing additives? I'm going to give this one a 3 out of 10 and more of a reef fantasy than not when it comes to magnesium, which is harder to source properly. None of the tech grades we tested today were suitable. It's possible that there are some out there, but even then, it's probably dependent on how much you use and what your water change or other export methods look like. To me, the risk on this one just isn't worth the reward. On the second question, do pharmaceutical grade materials really mean that it's any better? I'm going to give this one a 7 out of 10. It almost certainly means that it's substantially better than tech grade materials, but it's also better than some aquarium products. But Brightwell was a clear best on many elements in this one. I suspect that it's likely that that performance is related to them using pharmaceutical grade or higher materials. So this is one of the more interesting episodes. I can tell you right now the finance department here thinks that I'm insane and chastising me for being willing to spend a ton of money just to show that another brand is better on some fronts. But that's the world that we live in. It's near impossible to be the absolute lowest cost and absolute highest quality on every last item. In this case, we'll have to settle for second best, better than most aquarium brands, but in bulk and at a solid value price point. Who knows, this may motivate me to hunt even harder for that mythical magnesium value trifecta of more, better, and less. Before we close this out, I want to remind everyone what this testing will and won't do. We're not testing for organics here, so evaporated salts may have a significant amount of organic content from the environment, but this type of testing would not identify it. There's also many other elements that we're unable to test for, so this is just a window into what we can see. There is more. There's also no universally agreed upon appropriate level for many of the parameters we tested other than something capable of maintaining natural seawater levels is best. Outside of maintaining natural ocean parameters, there isn't a definitive answer to how much is too much aluminum or silica other than most of us would just like less as long as it's affordable. This week we're going to continue to give away those Triton ICP test kits with five more just because the ability to do some of this testing in your own home on your own tank is what's most valuable. In the end, 
What we'd all like to do is use the lowest cost option that's capable of maintaining natural seawater parameters, and ICB testing is one of the best ways for the community to collectively identify what that is. So hit that link in the lower left, or head on over to the website, click specials and deals, and then free stuff to sign up. As always, if you think this type of testing information that we share on BRS TV is valuable, let us know with a quick thumbs up, and then subscribe and hit the notification bell because we do this every week on Friday. See you next week with the fourth episode in this series where we look at calcium additives, and I think a fun way to close out the series.